Hello, beloved soul, and welcome to the Spiritual Support Crew, the podcast dedicated to supporting all light workers, star seeds, psychics, healers, and all helper souls incarnated on Earth in these interesting times. I'm your host, Helen Crosby, and today I want to discuss a topic that might sound controversial on the face of it, but actually boils down mostly to common sense another quality that seems to be very lacking in today's world. And that topic is spiritual anarchy. I have to say, we are really living through some bizarre times right now in 2021. We have the dubious privilege of being witness to a time in our history where acting normal is considered extreme and wanting to breathe freely has been labelled selfish or even dangerous for others. Strange times indeed. Now, as I've said before, I'm one of those people who's always known that I was here to make a difference and, on some level, to help fight a great battle between good and evil. I was aware of that even as a child, although in my innocence I couldn't begin to comprehend what the battle would look like, or more importantly, that it wasn't really a battle at all. As we move into the new energy of the Age of Aquarius, many of us are reaching new levels of understanding of the universe, and with that often comes greater spiritual awareness, a deep understanding of the nature of God, the universe, and our own existence. One of the most powerful themes I witnessed on my own spiritual path is that progress seems to coincide with greater levels of personal responsibility, radical self-honesty and self-reflection. Again, this really wasn't what I was expecting, because like most other people, I went through the government education system where we were taught that wisdom came from books, from memorising things, and that you had to earn important looking certificates that could only be awarded to you by academically advanced, officially sanctioned educators. The reality that I discovered, however, when it comes to spirituality at least, is really quite different to that. As the years advance and my inner knowing deepens and evolves, I find myself leaning more and more into anarchy and less than ever before into structure, systems and other aspects of our ego, mind-based world. Now, I just want to take a moment to clarify the meaning of the word anarchy because it's a very misunderstood word that has a very bad reputation, and quite unfairly in my opinion. It seems to be one of those powerful and freeing words that has been hijacked, slandered and sullied over centuries until people dare not even speak it, except when spitting in disdain or horror at the very concept which they're taught to revile without fully understanding why. So the meaning of the word anarchy is no rulers. Not no rules, but no rulers. an arc e the prefix an indicating an absence of something, an archi from the word archon meaning ruler or commander in ancient Greek. So no rulers. To live in true anarchy, i.e. in the absence of rulers, also takes great maturity. It requires self-responsibility, confidence, but also kindness and compassion for others. It requires a deep awareness of the needs of other people as well as the self. Anarchy doesn't mean violence or brutality, and it certainly doesn't mean going around trashing other people's things or stealing from them. Ironically, all things that government seem to excel at, No, to be a true anarchist, you actually need to grow up. Spiritual anarchy goes along the same lines, insofar as we are each a perfect aspect of the divine and human form. So why on earth would we need spiritual rulers, clerics, priests or monarchs to mediate our relationship with divinity? Well, the answer is, we don't. But there's more to it than that. Spiritual anarchy requires that you take full responsibility for your life and your experiences, that you recognise your divine nature, the beautiful divine nature of all, and the interconnectedness of everything too. No one of us is above 
or below anyone else. We are all equal. We are all one, one with the divine presence that you might refer to as God, the great spirit or source. Ultimately, there's no separation, no hierarchy, because we never needed one to start with. Our true nature is unconditional love. And I believe that this is one of the many truths that humanity is slowly coming back to, and we'll start to understand more fully as we move into the age of Aquarius. Now, this lifetime, the one that we're all experiencing, presents, in my opinion, an opportunity for us to experience what life would be like if we were separate from the divine. And I'm sure you've heard me say that before if you're familiar with my work. We live in a realm where we can experience duality. So poles, polarities, pain and suffering, as well as love, kindness and compassion, light and dark, hot and cold, oneness and separation. But it's an illusion. It feels like we're separate when we incarnate on Earth, that we are truly alone because we're born with amnesia. That experience of separation and aloneness is currently being exacerbated by lockdowns and social distancing. And in some ways, that's really hitting the spiritual lesson home. But our perceived separation from God, from Source, isn't real. It's just a perception. And world religions has helped us to maintain this perception of separation by placing a mediator or a hierarchy of mediators between us and the divine and God, telling us that we need a go-between to contact God, or that we are somehow unclean or unworthy of direct contact with our divine source. Ridiculous. The separation from each other and from the divine feels very real to most people. And we currently have many systems in place to keep us believing that it's so, and not just religious ones either. The truth is that we are all interconnected energetically, and we could, if we chose to, use those energetic links to communicate and interact, like a spiritual world wide web. But we haven't learned, or perhaps remembered, how to do that yet as a species. Some people do already leverage and use the energetic links between us, and these people are sometimes referred to as psychics, shamans or magicians. But it's not really magic. It's something we will all be able to do at some point. Most probably not all of us in this lifetime, but at some point in our human evolution, for sure. The technological internet that we've only been using for a few short decades actually serves as a reminder on some level that we're all connected already. And that interconnectedness is there to be experienced by all of us. But it's an illusion that you need technology to facilitate that connection. Humanity has an awful lot of self-discovery to do. And the current world events, although terrifying for many, are acting as a huge catalyst for this process. But back to the topic at hand, spiritual anarchy, which is what I want to focus on today, because that seems like a pretty good place to start the next phase of our journey as spiritual beings having a human experience in the age of Aquarius. The premise to me is that just as we don't need governments to tell us what to do and right from wrong, we don't need religions to do that for us either, because when it comes down to it, we instinctively know. Each of us has access to our own higher wisdom, to the divine source. The age of Pisces that we are now leaving put us into boxes, into structures, where we had to struggle, bow and scrape, believing ourselves to be unworthy, less than or downright bad. The new age of Aquarius gives us the opportunity to see the truth. And I believe that is why we're seeing such extreme events happening in the world right now. In this new energy, we are already starting to remember who we are, to realise that power structures, governments and monarchies are manipulative and not actually in service of the common good. The Great Awakening, which is what many people are calling this time we're going through, is opening our eyes to so many truths about the world we live in, and not least on a spiritual level. 
Spiritual anarchy is freedom, oneness, and brings great inner peace. It is a rejection of the religious or anti-religious systems created by the world in an attempt to keep us from discovering the truth of who we are. They may have been built with good intentions, perhaps even to keep us quote-unquote safe. Does anyone else see a pattern here with keeping us safe? But at this point, they're just holding us back. We are not children. But spiritual anarchy, like its apolitical counterpart, isn't for everyone. Not just yet, anyway. Not because it's a bad system, but because it's not actually a system at all. And most people are so hardwired into the system of systems in their state or country, so indoctrinated and so institutionalised, that the very idea of escaping their system cage terrifies them, absolutely scares them to death. Like a caged bird who is too afraid to hop through the open door to freedom, many people just aren't ready for the spiritual freedom and personal spiritual responsibility that spiritual anarchy demands. Spiritual anarchy isn't ordered and there's no rule book. It's sometimes messy, involves self-discovery, self-healing and learning to trust in our own higher wisdom. It's certainly not for the faint-hearted. The concept itself is not a new one, and many ancient spiritual and religious teachings have tried to hint at it in more or less explicit ways. And more recently, the works of Osho, which if you haven't discovered him yet, I would encourage that you look into that. Spiritual anarchy is not a complicated or grand concept. The, quite the reverse. Its beauty actually lies in its simplicity. We are all one. We are all the divine in unique human form. And because of that, we each have a responsibility to ourselves and to one another. It couldn't really get much simpler, could it? And yet, it's still going to be a long path for many to reach. A path that requires levels of self-responsibility, self-honesty and bravery that most people just aren't ready for. And that's not a criticism. We all get there in our own time, but for most it won't be in this incarnation. But my own higher wisdom knows that in the future there will be no more rulers of humanity, either political, religious or otherwise. No monarchies, no rulers or authority figures curating or controlling our access to the divine. Because when humanity wakes up, grows up, and we remember who we are, we just won't need them anymore. <laughs>